Hi, I'm Dave, founder of Halloween Year Round, and today I'm talking about the new British monster horror family drama, The Beast Within, starring everybody's favorite King of the North, Kit Harrington. In fact, it reunites Kit Harrington with James Cosmo, who played Lord Commander Mormont of the Night's Watch in Game of Thrones, which is kind of a fun detail, even if they don't have a whole lot of scenes together. But let's jump right in. It's okay. I am a monster. This is a movie that a lot of you probably have never heard of, and frankly, it was one I never heard of either until I saw there was some buzz about it, and I saw that it was playing at like an AMC, you know, 45 miles away. So I literally, I saw it on a double feature with Deadpool and Wolverine, and the first movie I saw was very, very crowded. When I went to see this one in, like, the next theater over, I was literally the only one in the theater. I had the whole place to myself, which kind of made for an interesting experience for a horror movie. It's from that sort of subgenre of, like, horror, family drama, the supernatural horror element is actually a metaphor for family trauma. But it does it well, and allow me to explain. So you had this family kind of living in the in the countryside, and and the father seems to be afflicted with something that uh, occurs once a month. I think you know what I mean. It has to do with the moon. You know what I mean. So we follow his, his young daughter as she suspects something is up, and she kind of digs deeper into it, and she kind of gets different versions of her father, which I think... Kit Harrington, he is top build, even though he's not the main character, the daughter is. I really like the way he plays a tortured soul here, and I really like the way that he's kind of unpredictable as a parent. And that's where I think a lot of the, the fear and the scares come from, is not so much the werewolf stuff, spoilers, it's not really spoilers, you know it's a werewolf movie. But the, 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 the horror and the fear comes from his daughter not knowing... Is she going to get the nice version of her dad today? Or is she going to get the violent, you know, almost abusive version of her dad, even though he's not in wolf mode? And that's why I, that's where I think the movie's trying to go with... I mean, it literally opens up with, with a famous quote about each of us having two beasts inside at war with each other. And I think there's a, a not-so-thinly-veiled metaphor for how, you know, his own you know, uh, lycanthrope affliction is kind of a metaphor for the way that for his beasts fighting each other and, and that struggle in all of us, you know? So I liked what it did kind of as a family drama horror. If, if you're looking for just like a straight up werewolf movie, it's probably not the movie for you. It is very slow burn. It is much more focused on the family dynamic and the characters. I like what it does with them, but like, don't go in expecting the howling. Don't go in expecting an American werewolf in London. Don't go in expecting, you know, dog soldiers. Don't go in expecting Wolfen or any other number of werewolves. Don't go in expecting Cursed. Don't go in expecting 2010's The Wolfman. I mean, I... I hope you wouldn't expect that. I, I didn't like that movie very much. But the werewolf stuff is kind of very secondary, and we don't get a whole lot of it in the grand scheme of its runtime. Now, when we do get the werewolf stuff, I really, really like the practical design here. There's one scene in particular involving fire, just this one sequence, that just looks amazing, that you can tell was done practically because they didn't have the budget for CGI that looks that good. And I really, really like what it does with it. You know, it it's all a build up to the end. It is a slow burn. So again, if that's something you're in the mood for, if that's something, you know, you can you can uh, you can handle. If that's something you like, I think you'll enjoy it. But if you go in expecting this like balls to the wall monster movie, that's not really what this is. This was more. It was closer to hereditary. Than it was 
Exorcism of Emily Rose, if that makes sense. It was closer to the witch than it was the witches. But all that being said, I enjoyed it for what it was. You know, I, I enjoyed it as just like a character study. And I, again, Kit Harrington, he hasn't done a whole lot since Game of Thrones. And it was just cool to see him in something. It, it was cool to see him, you know, again, kind of play a, a tortured character. Kind of weird meta because, you know, he's turning into a wolf. And, you know, that was the symbol of House Stark. There's literally a scene where he's wearing this, like, fur coat that literally just looks like his Night Watch outfit. And it's like, just just wear that, Jon Snow. I think any Game of Thrones fan will probably have a hard time watching this movie he, and not just refer to him as Jon Snow the entire time. But, like I said, I really enjoyed it for what it was. It's one of those movies that probably won't be like in my top 10 of the year. There's other ones that like wowed me more, but it was one that I can walk away from and be like, you know, I'm, I'm glad I saw that. And if anyone is ever asking me, Hey, I'd love a good thoughtful horror drama, but I also like werewolves. I'd be like the beast within is for you. But Hey, these are just my thoughts. I would love to know yours. Have you seen this movie? Is it playing near you? Because I had to go pretty far to find a theater playing it near me. Like, share, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff. If you don't, you may end up being chased down by a werewolf who is also Jon Snow. So that makes him like extra Stark werewolf. And as always, every day is Halloween.